basically my experience is I was the guy who developed on the side, made the eye journaler uh, for the iPad. Because I saw Steve Jobs, he showed it magical. How are we going to do something like this? I used to make iPhone apps for people. I wanted to make my own app. So I made eye journal. We released it. <coughs> there we, go. we released it on launch day. Worked really hard to get out. Uh, got out there. We'd always made things for other people. We weren't so hard with ourselves. Uh, we sold it for first month. We sold it for two dollars a pop. We sold fourteen hundred of them. We couldn't believe it. Uh, everybody else raised the price. We raised ours. Now we sold six thousand. So how did we get there? Well, we got the we we see Steve Jobs. He showed us an iPad. We've never had an iPad. Nobody's had an iPad. So we go off the simulator. We think, is this just, do we get it real complicated? Do we make it more like an iPhone? So we made our decision. Simple. We're going to make it what we don't think other people do, natural, not new age and all that other kind of technical. We wanted natural. And we wanted to, since it's never been easy to get help on an iPhone, we wanted to make it obvious that all apps are good. So first version came out. You open it up. Here it is. Back up and just plug it into your iTunes, it's backed up for you. Then everybody else started coming out. There was one other app. <coughs> they started coming out. What are they doing? They're doing planners. Everybody's saying, hey, we want this, we want that, we want pictures, we want our calendar. We stayed with what we wanted. We wanted the natural look. We wanted people have been selling leather journals for ages. We wanted to stay like that. So since we knew what we wanted, we didn't want somebody else to mess it up. We didn't let them change the settings. There are no settings in the font. We changed it for accessibility, but for a long time there's that font. They, the right page is always your most recent that can't have a mess with it. And so now we had to deal with discoverability. How do we, nobody ever reads help, how do we introduce new features? So every time we put a new version out, there's two icons at the top. Those are our new features. Those stay up there until the next version. When the next version comes, we move to the menu. Every time we have a new feature or anything like that, it hurts. You know, somebody has to learn something. There's something that could go wrong. The app becomes more complicated. People like the first minute or two of your app, and if you have made it too complicated, you're not going to get anywhere. So we are very opinionated. We have this is just this, like I'm telling you, this is how it works. Well, some people won't like it, and that's okay if they don't like it because they didn't listen to you, and they don't like it because it doesn't do everything. You just want to be honest because if you're honest with people, you will end up with more reviews where people listen. They said, well, you told us it was going to be simple. You told us it was going to be straightforward, and it was. That's why we've been so lucky to get really good reviews from everybody. And those reviews are what kept us able to keep going. We set up a Facebook site. It was able to keep us where we get. Now we've got like 100 followers, which we just think is cool because people follow an app. And they come in there and they tell us things and we're jumping in and we're telling them, hey, that's great. Here's a new feature. What do you think? And all this kind of stuff builds and word of mouth is hugely important for iPad sales. And then the last thing that we always make sure we do, we have our phone on us, we're always ready. We get an email, we get a problem, we try to answer it within 10 minutes to 20 minutes so that they know that somebody's listening 11 o'clock at night, anything like that. So that's how we built it. So how do we get people to know about it? You know, this is who I'm used to telling me I'm doing it. That's not how it is when you're outside in the real world. There's not somebody to tell you you're doing a good job. So our real world is the app store. And our app store is fantastic. I develop software. I don't do marketing. I don't do all this other stuff. I don't have to hire it. I get to do it at the app store do it. I've set my keyword, this little SEO, little search engine optimization, and then people find me. That's all I have to do. I have a website that's minimal. Then we have to make sure the screenshots are important. Incredibly, the first thing you do is you go and look at your screenshots. So we always wanted to make sure that our screenshots represented our product in such a way. So that was on the designer. The next part's on the programmer. You know, people are then going to come back and say, I like the app, I don't like the app, it didn't do what I wanted to do, it broke, it failed, all those types of things. If you do those two things right, you get the people making decisions and buying. And here's our first month to show it. We, when we ranked high in searches, we shot way up. And when we started asking for ratings, and people started giving us good ratings back, we doubled or almost tripled how many sales we were making in a day. And so that's been kind of the way things gone. I just designed, this is my developer, or designer, I just developed, designer Nate Ferguson. He's not here, but he's been great. He did this for three or four weeks, so I want to hop him. And he was fantastic. If anybody gets a chance to go see him. Thank you. <laughs>